want to begin by thanking Senator Baldwin, Senator, for your leadership, for your determination and your courage, especially in these times. We need you more than ever. I'm so proud to be here with you today. You know, when, when I was 11 years old, I was trying to tell my mom, I think I'm gay. And she told me, honey, honey, it's just a phase. Retrospectively, this has been a very long phase. <laughs> I never thought that one day I'd be standing here as the State Comptroller of Connecticut in front of so many people who have fought for LGBTQ rights and for candidates across our great country. Thank you truly, for your work. Like many of you, I've never been one to sit on the sidelines. When the rules aren't working for people, I work to change the rules. When I saw people around me dying of AIDS, I became an activist who used every tool I could to try and save their lives. Our government was treating gay men as disposable, and we were doing everything possible to get someone, anyone, to listen, and then to take action. When a judge told my partner Charles and I that we were unsuitable to adopt our kids because we were gay and unmarried, we fought back. We appealed all the way to the appellate division of the New York State Court, and in 1994, we won the right to adopt our sons. Because of that case, more single people and gay couples across that state were able to grow their own families through adoption. Let me introduce you to Charles, now my spouse, who's with me today. We're going to celebrate 31 years together this summer. And a special shout out to the political spouses in the room. Thank you for everything that you do. <laughs> As openly gay parents of three African-American kids, two with autism, our family lives and works and breathes at an intersection of race and national origin, of class and gender and religion and sexual orientation. For me, those fights for our basic rights are deeply personal, and they serve as a daily reminder that our politics and our policies come with a deep human cost. They can knock people down, or we can lift them up. When I first ran for Comptroller seven years ago, it was because I was tired of banging my head against the wall trying to make change from the outside. I believe that the decisions we make in government must match our values, and the people we elect must represent the diversity of our communities. In 2014, I won re-election with more than half a million votes, and I'm proud of the change that we've made. But I'm also clear that there's more to be done. That's why, last month, I officially announced my campaign to explore a run for governor of Connecticut. My state, a state that we love, faces real challenges. But the fact is, across America, we are facing real challenges. The threats coming from state capitals and from the nation's capital put us at risk. And now it's more important than ever to support LGBTQ leaders, to give our resistance an even stronger voice, and to show the next generation that there's a place for them in public service, too because representation is powerful and it matters. People are demanding that their government actually see them, listen, come to understand their struggles and their dreams, and then act to help make those dreams a reality. So many of you here are powerful symbols of strength, of struggle, and of resistance. With that experience comes a set of tools that we must put to work on behalf of those whose rights and dreams are at risk. With the help of the Victory Fund, we have won so many battles, but there are more that lie ahead. I am proud and ready 
to stand with you. And I hope you will stand with me too.